What do you think of the deal and the promise to buy agricultural goods? Because they haven't delivered in the previous five promises to buy agricultural goods. I think that's the point. <clears throat> it's simply a promise, and we don't know what we have here. And I think for your viewers, they need to use a benchmark of about $23 billion that we were doing in agricultural trade with China prior to the war on trade that we're in the middle of. So anything that comes out on an annual basis Benchmark it against the $23 billion that we were doing in the agricultural industry with China. So is it $50 billion? Okay, that's fine. But th is that over two years? Well, if it's over two years, then that's hardly any increase at all. It doesn't account for anything that we've lost over the last two. And, and have we seen more structural changes that aren't going to reverse themselves? I've seen some analysis to that effect that because of the way supply chains have shifted, even if China's making these promises, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the enforcement mechanisms are, for example. So are they still going to be buying soybeans from Brazil, for example? Well, supply chains is, is, is the real change here that, um, that agriculture worries about. Um, supply chains have changed. Uh, China's buying more from Brazil. My goodness, they're buying some from Russia, for heaven's sakes. Not a lot, but uh, it, it, it's, that, that's more of a probably a political uh, antagonistic move. But uh, these supply chains, in our view, or excuse me, in my view, I should say, I will just re represent myself, um, probably have shifted and changed for the next generation. Mm. Now, it's, it's going to be a long time before we get these back. So farm bankruptcies, they've spiked over the last uh, year and a half since the trade war began. And you know, these people who have gone bankrupt, they're not gonna be able to see any of this money essentially um, to help them. So what have you seen in your own state of Ohio uh, among the farmers? Well, there's certainly a lot of tension and, and you've hit on exactly what, where I really wanted to start with this conversation is that this war on trade affects real people. It affects real farmers in communities with bankruptcies, increases in nationwide in suicides. And one thing uh, that the Ohio State University has done that I've never seen, I'm a graduate of OSU, um, that I've never seen is focusing on stress management right now, just new programming out, stress management for farmers. Now, it isn't all trade related. We've been through a terrible crop year. I mean, with, with the rains rain, yeah. and, and et cetera, et cetera. Couldn't get our crop planted. We were late on, on down the road. But to add to that, the trade tension, this affects real people, and that's what your viewers need to understand. Have you made a decision, because you know, we were talking to you last time you joined us about whether or not you would run for Congress. Have you decided yet? Certainly we're still in the, in the exploratory phase, and, and I don't mean to be, uh, to be coy with that. You know, the intention here is not to make a political statement. Uh, the intention would be to move forward. But I want to be data-driven, and to do that, we need to continue to do polling and to make sure that, um, that if I'm going to make this run for Congress, that I do it because the, the, the margin for victory certainly is very, very narrow in the 4th District. But agriculture is something that has been uh, overlooked for the whole term of our cur current congressman. And so I'm going to change that. So I know that you're still in the exploratory committee phase, but if you were to run and you were to get elected, what would now that we have a phase one trade deal, what would you make your next priority in terms of U.S.-China trade relations? There's no doubt that China's been a bad actor, okay? My proposal is this, that number one, and we talked before, agriculture is a national security interest, plain and simple. It needs to be treated that way, and never should we be put on the front lines like, like we have now. So I, I would think that we need to gather our allies that, by the way, we have tariffed them to death also. It, 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 it's like this. The beatings will continue until morale improves. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's where we're at. We have to knock that off because to take on China, it's never going to be just a singular U.S. taking it on alone. It's going to have to be a set of allies. And you know, we had that framework in the, in the Trans-Pacific Partnership. We had them surrounded. It wasn't going to be the end all, but we had that framework mm -hmm. of partnering allies that we could have gone after China then and got those real, real structural reforms that not only agriculture needs, but also business needs as well to move forward. 
Chris, I want to ask you about something that um, a turn of phrase you used that I haven't quite heard before. Instead of calling it the trade war, you called it the war on trade. And I don't know if that was just a slip of the tongue, but it was interesting to hear it framed in that way, in that sort of adversarial way. Um, when you talk to your potential constituents, your peers mm -hmm. in Ohio, do you think sentiment has shifted against the president as a result of this war on trade, as you call it? I think I think there's some real fissures there. Now they're very minute, okay, but that's those always crack before the whole thing crumbles. Farmers historically, and historically I should say over the past two years, have been supportive of the president. Um, I I feel like I'm an island, island a lot of times that that I'm the only one that's been outspoken. But I'll tell you what my um, what my anecdotal evidence is, is that it's not necessarily the farmers that, the, that the, uh, uh, the president needs to worry about, the farmers who are normally the man, um, the operators normally the uh, man, that's changing rapidly, but, but, but as a rule it is. I think it's farm wives. And what I've talked, I've talked to farm wives, and what they, they're looking for for their farms, when they look out of the, over the horizon, they want some predictability, and they don't want to see storm clouds. Mm. for their farms, for their families, and moving those farms on down through the generations. And the administration has failed on both of those for family farms. So my prediction is this, is that farm wives are a place where the president has some real vulnerability. Because th those, those farm wives, when they go into the ballot box, they're going to use this pen like a samurai sword. <laughs> Just like that. That's my prediction. All right. Ohio soybean farmer Christopher Gibbs, good to have you here on The Move. Come back anytime. Thank you. Yeah, great to see you in person. Thank you.